What's up everyone, Zynobine here, and this is Zyne's Guide to Halo 4 on Legendary. This is the level shutdown. Right, before you get into the Pelican, stock up on saw ammo and swap out your assault rifle for a DMR. Initiating pre-flight diagnostics. Forward auto cannon, check. Before we find another ride home. You know that, right? It'll be okay. Alright, you're given a choice to go to the left or right tower. We're gonna go ahead and go in rally point order and start with the one on the left. Marking two of the larger facilities on your HUD. Now this section is a bit of uh a bit of a bitch, mainly because of the fact that the Phantom Turrets the primary ones, the concussion rifle shots, fire at about 20 times faster than they would normally. It's rather reminiscent of the opening of Sacred Icon, where the Phantom blows up the arm off of the one Enforcer that's about to just basically annihilate the Arbiter. And for whatever reason, 343 thought to uh, bring that back in the, the one level we're allowed to fly a Pelican, so... You pretty much have to do what you always do in this game, which is stay at a distance and pick off your targets. Once that's over with, go ahead, land the pelican, and then proceed inside. Pick up the binary rifle. You're going to want to drop it and the saw in a easy-to-get-to spot, away from other weapons. You're also going to want to blow up those two hard light explosives, mainly because they'll just, they're just a detriment. Head up top, activate the gondola. You're going to want to hide on this side of the gondola. And I hate to implement a strategy like this, but it's just for the sake of convenience, ironically. You're going to want to take out each of the jackals that peek their head out in one headshot, if possible. But you want to make sure all four of them are dead before the gondola stops. There'll be one right there. The other one will be walking up that hallway. One more up top on the top left. And then the last one on the far right, hiding down there. Once they're dealt with, head up top. Start picking off grunts and jackals. You're going to want to move quickly. You want to make sure that that beam rifle doesn't despawn. And we're also going to pick up a needler and a plasma pistol for the two knights that will spawn in later. Make sure you pick up at least two plasma grenades as well. We're gonna go ahead and just make ourselves a small weapons cache back here. We're gonna have at least one beam rifle, a needler, and a plasma pistol. We're gonna wanna hang back here and try to take pot shots at all of the grunts and jackals, and then we're gonna try to take out the elites from range with the light rifle. And if you run out of ammo, 
while you're trying to strip the shield, you can just swap back to the DMR and just proceed to just, you know, spam it from range. Which is why I carry two headshot capable weapons during this section. And why I opt to use the DMR over the battle rifle. Bye. <laughs> Once all the hostiles are taken care of, head over here, pick up your plasma pistol. Swap to the plasma grenade, and then we're going to go ahead and reactivate the gondola. What's fun? Okay, the lockout has been released. Alright, immediately sprint. We'll go over here. Overcharge your plasma pistol. As soon as the knight spawns in, EMP him, throw a grenade, and then use the needler to finish off the other knight. If he teleports, he usually just teleports around the corner and you can easily kill him with the needler, so you don't have to worry. Alright. Pick up a light rifle. We're gonna head over and pick up the beam rifle that we left at the weapons cache. And then we're gonna go ahead and take out the one battle wagon and crawler a bunch of crawlers on the gondola. You don't want to just spam all your shots of the beam rifle. We're going to need it for later. Alright. Pick up your saw. Swap to the pulse grenade. Make sure that's the one that you have selected. You're going to want to head down here and wait in this position and look at your radar. You're going to have to figure out which side the one knight comes in on. Throw a pulse grenade, use the saw to kill him. Same thing for the other one. When he's dead, retreat, pick up your binary rifle, and proceed to take out the knight lancer. He is also wielding a binary rifle, and I found out a strategy that's rather foolproof. If you go ahead and just peer around the corner, shoot him, and then just repeatedly do this over and over again, he won't be able to actually charge up the binary rifle and shoot. I wouldn't count on him doing this, so we're going to go ahead and pretend that that didn't happen. And his, his uh, binary rifle fell out of the map anyway, so it's not like we got to use it. Alright, now our goal here is to try to take out as many of the crawlers as we can, and the watchers as well. Make sure that your binary rifle is already loaded. Just make sure it always has two shots, just in case you whiff one of them. Once you kill that watcher, for whatever reason, that knight will just spawn in another one. I genuinely do not know if that's a bug or not, and I really don't feel like... Like, running over, setting up a capture card, and figuring it out if that's a thing that happens on OG Hardware. So just assume that that happens each time, I guess. And I'm gonna go ahead and just assume that you ran out of binary rifle shots at this point. We're gonna go ahead and try to proceed upwards and forwards. And we're gonna want to go ahead and try to pick up the scatter shot that's in the container on the left side. I don't recommend doing this. It's kind of just a little bit cheesy and it's not super reliable. I just did that because I 
wanted to use the last shot I had. Alright. Pick up the scatter shot. And we're going to hold on to it in case something ends up happening up ahead with the two other knights that spawn in. But hopefully we won't have to resort to it. Alright. Since that is a knight battle wagon with a scatter shot, we're going to have to take him out from range using the light rifle because getting any closer is just suicide. He may or may not have Promethean vision. I don't think he does since he tends to kind of just wander around and he doesn't just instantly lock onto you, so. Once all the crawlers and knights are taken care of, reactivate the gondola. Head over to the left-hand side. Don't worry that there's no light rifles on the other points of the platform, because there are up, some up here. When you hear the knights teleport in, immediately go for the high ground, because there is a knight over there that is wielding an incineration cannon, and he can and will one-shot you with it if you get anywhere closer than this. If you do have to get closer, keep your time brief, and remember you do have a jetpack, and using it makes it exponentially harder for him to hit you. Alright, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the Lancer. We're going to go ahead and just peek around cover and try to trick him into firing at the wall instead of directly at us. If the Knight teleports, you don't have to worry. You don't have to revert. There are plenty of light rifles there. Once that Knight's down, head back down to the bottom. Pick up your saw and your beam rifle. We're going to use these to take out the group of Watchers that spawn in. We're not even going to bother using the Incineration Cannon. Alright, run back here, take cover. You're going to want to use the saw and short controlled bursts. As I mentioned before, it is extremely accurate when fired in that way. If you run out of beam rifle ammo, you can go ahead and just press forward. Worst case scenario, you pick up a suppressor or a, uh, like a bolt shot. I also recommend, on very rare occasions, throwing grenades at Watchers to intentionally force them to do their redirection attack, as it does make them significantly easier to hit initially, and that allows you to, to at least have a higher chance of killing them outright. Once they're down, activate the gondola, and then just ride it back. Cortana, where's this coming from? Where's what coming from? The Didact's voice. I'm not picking up anything, Chief. He's there. Keep trying. Before you jump off the gondola, go ahead pick up some pulse grenades. As I've mentioned before, they are one of the few tools you will get that can reliably stun knights that are in a plasma pistol overcharge, and unlike the plasma pistol, it actually is efficient. Alright. We get a new pelican, which means that we get a fresh supply of weapons. Go ahead, pick up a saw and a DMR. And second verse, same as the first. Head over to the next tower, blow up the phantoms as carefully as possible, and then proceed inside.
There's a lot more comm traffic passing through this tower than just what's servicing the Didact satellite. These systems use data attenuators to regulate the flow of communications. Right, once you're inside, go ahead, try to kill all of the watchers. There are way too many to count. I'm not even gonna bother counting them. We're gonna go ahead and try to save the saw for the knights for long range shield stripping. And once that's out of ammo, we can go ahead and pick up one of the two scatter shots in the containers at the far end of the room. That n nice flight path. I wish there were, you know, other strategies we could use for taking out watchers, but... The most efficient one is spamming, you know, precision weapons. Once you clear both sides, we're going to go ahead and just head up ahead slightly. There will be more watchers and more crawlers. We're not going to activate the thing to expose the attenuators yet, mainly because... Well, I'll be honest, do you want to add a knight to this equation? Once you have sufficiently murdered everything in the area, head back over here, stock up on light rifle ammo. Poke the button, turn around, there will be one night that spawns in. Once the energy ball, whatever they call it, gets destroyed, two more knights will spawn in on both sides. What we're going to do is we're going to head to one side, take out the one knight with the saw and light rifle. That will allow the other knight to spawn in a watcher, and he will take a position slightly further back. But we can go ahead and deal with him in due time. Right, throw a pulse grenade. Combo the knight. Cortana, are you hearing me? No. Didact? We're not gonna even gonna bother with the auto sentry. It's not that it wouldn't be helpful, it's just that we need a jetpack on the way out of here, and I'd rather not have someone pick it up, forget about it, and then end up dying as a result. I try to avoid any unnecessary frustration. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you ran out of saw ammo at this point. So go ahead, swap it out for a scatter shot. There will be another knight that spawns in with a suppressor. We're going to go ahead and try to hug the right side and pick up two pulse grenades and try to use those to stun the knight. And if that doesn't work, well in doubt. Right, once that knight's down, go ahead. Same thing as before. Throw a grenade. Run over to where the knight spawns in. Throw a pulse grenade to stun him. Use the scatter shot to kill him. I'm going to be blunt. That is bullshit. Somehow that watcher sur Somehow the watcher survived.
Alright, two knights on this side. That is a battle wagon with a suppressor, which makes him a complete joke. Take him out with a light rifle. If you get close enough, use the scatter shot. You don't need to worry about restocking on ammo for the scatter shot because using it in this next section will get you killed. There will be a handful of crawlers, and then there will be a knight with a incineration cannon. Unfortunately, there are no reliable strategies I have concocted that are new or exciting for this section, so we're gonna go ahead and do the patented Halo 4 strategy. Span the light rifle at range. With a twist. We're gonna use a jetpack. Isn't that exciting? Thankfully, using the jetpack makes it so that he basically won't be able to hit you. But unfortunately, it does increase the difficulty of actually being able to hit him. Before you proceed to the next tower, pick up a DMR and a railgun. We're going to use this slight incline as cover. We're going to go ahead, take out as many grunts as we can from back here, and we're going to take out the two plasma turrets on the other platforms. Line up the shot. Let it rip. Now you don't have to worry about conserving ammo for the DMR in this section. Mainly because that there is a carbine dispenser up ahead, and we will be using that.
All right, we're going to go ahead, head over here, and pick up the plasma turret. We want to make sure that doesn't despawn. It, it's a, I've unfortunately not as effective as the one time on Requiem, but it's still better than nothing. Right, if you go over here, there is a dispenser with two fuel rod cannons in it. We're going to use that to deal with the two hunters up ahead. But before we proceed, we're going to head over here and pick up a carbine. Now, thankfully, we don't have to go back to that dispenser. There is one at the top of the gravity lift when we get to the next section. We're going to want to head over there in a moment. There is another vital tool we will need going ahead. I just drop the turret here for now. There's an elite over there using a fuel rod cannon. We will deal with him basically right now. Go ahead, pick up an incineration cannon. Locate your target. Jump on the gravity lift. Take him out. Head back, pick up your fuel rod cannon. We're gonna go ahead and just juggle it over here. We're gonna go ahead and just lead with the incineration cannon and try to take out both of the hunters. You, your mileage may vary with being able to kill a hunter with the incineration cannon. You should be able to kill at least one of them and then use the fuel rod cannon to take out the other. Alright, pick up your carbine, pick up the turret, head up to the next area. Drop your turret there, pick up a plasma pistol. We're gonna have to deal with this one elite across the bridge. I should mention the plasma pistol from Deus Ex is a PS20, not a PS250. Bit of a clerical error, but oh well, I think people got the idea. You're only going to want to expend about three fuel rods per turret. Normally, that's more than enough. I'm trying to get the Banshee's attention. I tried firing a couple shots with Plasma Turret, it didn't work, and I wanted to go ahead and try to draw it over here, so I started using the Carbine. All 
Alright, so similar thing on... On Requiem, we're gonna go ahead and try to use the Plasma Turret to take out the Banshees. For whatever reason, they tend to take a very wide flight path around, and they are significantly harder to hit. Mainly because, ironically, in an indoor location, they have more room to fly, I guess. Had to deal with a phone call there. My apologies. So close to the end, I didn't want to re-record this. <laughs> Wanted to see if there were any extra weapons lying around. There weren't any. But in the dispenser here, we can pick up a binary rifle. It takes about three shots from it to down one of the banshees, I found out. You would think that it flat out would deal no damage, but apparently not. little ammo you got left in your turret. We're gonna go ahead and take that lift. Head across in a second. Don't know where my binary rifle shot went. It just flat out designed no damage there. That was kind of kind of irksome. Right. Head over the gap. Use what, whatever you got left of the plasma turret to mow down the remaining enemies. There's another binary rifle over here. I don't know what that elite was doing. Also, the fact that he survived several shots from the carbine and a stick is also very irksome. I was going to try to use a light rifle to finish off that banshee, but it made itself a nuisance, so I went ahead and just finished it off. Line up the shot, swap to your carbine, you should be able to headshot it with the carbine from that distance. The grunt. Now you can use a needler for this as well if you'd prefer. But if you get close enough with the binary rifle, it can hit targets at close range. It's a little tad bit risky, but if you don't feel like your aim is up to par, go ahead and just swap it out for a needler. We're gonna go ahead and just pick up an incineration cannon anyway. We're gonna go ahead and use that to take out as many enemies as we can from range. Once most of the turrets are out, if not all of them, we're going to head back to the Banshees, and we're going to go ahead and actually fly the Banshee to the objective. I do recommend being very careful if you hear an overcharge plasma pistol start up. I recommend keeping your distance and trying to kill the enemies that are wielding them. Case in point. You can also do tricks in the Banshee, and if you let go of the boost button, you maintain momentum, uh, but you actually get the boost back. Once pretty much everything's down, you can go ahead and just fly the Banshee over here. And just head up the tunnel, put Cortana into the control room, and then the level ends. See you next time.
Ships online. They're leaving. I'm sorry. I don't know what. Track those lichens. We can go across them to get to the Didact ship. Wait. Across them? Yes. Um, there. There are several liches moving in formation towards the Didact ship. We're only going to have one shot at this. 